Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another important lecture. Today we are studying the OCD pictures in age related macular degeneration. So as we all know the normal anatomy of the OCD uh, the macula and retina on OCD. Now if you do not know about that I already have a playlist the of free videos on OCD in my channel in which I talk about the normal anatomy and how the normal macula looks on OCD. So here in ARMD we are going to start discussing each features that we see on fundus and how do we find it on the OCD. So the first thing that we see which is very important in uh, ARMD specifically the dry ARMD is the presence of drusens. Now I already told you in the video on pathophysiology of uh, ARMD that what is meant by drusens. Drusens are nothing but they are accumulations which occur in the inner collagenous layer of the Brux membrane and in the retinal pigment epithelium. So in this picture you can see that there are multiple drusens present over here uh, represented by these hyperpigmented dots like structures. Now drusens can be of different types. We can have hard drusens, we can have soft drusens, we can have confluent drusens and then those drusens can mix together, uh, they can coalesce together and they can form a large pigment epithelial detachment as well. Now first let us understand how a drusen looks on an OCD. So this red color line over here, the outermost red line, hyperreflected line is actually the retinal pigment epithelium. Now you can see the small lumps and bumps in the retinal pigment epithelium and these lumps and bumps which are seen in the retinal pigment epithelium are basically because of the deposition of certain material below the RPE or we can say in between the RPE and the inner collagenal layer of the Brux membrane and these are nothing but the drusens. So similar thing you can see in this picture also there are so many uh, drusens you can see and they are actually the soft drusens okay because they are not so well defined as the hard drusens and the same picture you can see in the black and white here that this is the RPE the layer the outermost layer is the RPE here and you can see the RPE is actually showing this lumpy bumpy appearance okay this hyper reflective zone which is present above the RPE is actually your ellipsoid zone and then above that you have this uh, is the outer limiting membrane so you can see the RPE is actually showing this lumpy bumpy appearance and why is it showing that it is showing it because of the presence of uh, the sub RPE material which is nothing but the drusens picture I want you to look at a special kind of drusen which is called the pseudo drusen. Now first thing is over here you can see this is the RPE and you can see that there is a lumpy bumpy appearance of the RPE over here also. So these are nothing but they are your drusens okay. Now above those drusens or above the RPE we have the ellipsoid zone and this is the outer limiting membrane and then so on and so forth. But have a look at this picture here. So you can see that there is a deposit like this it is a triangle shaped deposit and this seems to be occurring above the level of the RPE. So this is the RPE. So above the level of RPE you have this deposit and then you have the ellipsoid zone and then you have the outer limiting membrane. So such a structure which occurs above at, uh, above the RPE and not below the RPE but looks very similar to drusen on a, a clinical fundus picture is called a pseudodrusen. Now so importance of pseudodrusen is that that pseudodrusens are basically associated with a greater progression to wet ARMD. Now we know that drusens and soft drusens can mix together and they can form a larger drusen and those drusens can cause a separation of the inner collagenous layer of the Brux membrane from the retinal pigment epithelium and that is called as a pigment epithelial detachment. Now if that happens because of the excessive drusenoid material it is called a drusenoid pigment epithelial detachment. Now the pigment epithelial detachment is basically nothing but a large kind of a drusen which is causing separation. Now we know that the soft drusens basically are above 125 micrometers in size whereas when the size of these uh, big drusens increases to about 350 microns then that is what is called as the pigment epithelial detachment. 
So you can see here, this is the RP. It's looking like drusen, but here look at this big good kind of drusen, and this is nothing but actually the pigment epithelial detachment. Now, when you talk about the pigment epithelial detachment, you have to look at the shape of the detachment and what kind of material is actually present below that pigment epithelium detachment, whether it is hyperreflected or it is hyporeflected or it is optically empty. And then you also have to look at the Brux membrane, whether it is visible or not at the base of that pigment epithelial detachment. Attachment. So in this first picture, you can see that you, you have this dome shaped attachment and detachment and below that you actually have somewhat hyper reflected material here and you can see a Brux membrane. So this is your drusenoid pigment epithelial detachment. This is the same picture of taken from the same patient after an ear and you can see these two drusens have actually coils even big uh, together to form a bigger pigment epithelial detachment and this pigment epithelial detachment is also causing some of the fluid to leak into the subretinal space. So you can see the subretinal fluid here. So pigment epithelial detachments are very important because they might be associated with a choroidal neovascular membrane also and they can progress to wet ARMD so it's very important that you follow up closely similarly here you can see this is a pigment epithelial detachment here and these are like drusens and this is a hyper reflected material which is present so this is a drusenoid PED now have a look at this PED. Here also you have a dome shape. So this is the elevation on the fundus and you can see a dome shaped detachment of the retinal pigment epithelium. It is uh, nicely, you know, separating from the RP, from the underlying Brux membrane. And you can see the zone is optically empty and you can see the Brux membrane here down. So this is a serous pigment epithelial detachment which happens in ARMD, especially the wet ARMD. So what happens with time, the, the Brux membrane gets thickened up it becomes more hydrophobic so all that metabolic excretory function of the rp gets hampered so the fluid which is coming out from the retina into the choreo capillaries will now will not be able to pass through this brux membrane into the uh, choreo capillaries and therefore the fluid will accumulate into the sub rpe space leading to a serous pigment epithelial detachment what about a fibrovascular PED? In a fibrovascular PED, basically, it is very similar to that of a CNVM. So what happens here is that in contrast to the serous PED where we have an optically empty zone and where we have a dome shape elevation, here you are going to see this irregular shape elevation of the retinal pigment epithelium. Moreover, you are going to see this zone. This is not properly homogeneous nor is it optically empty so there are some heterogeneous zones which you see here okay there is hyper reflectivity there is hyper reflectivity right so this is your uh, fibrovascular PED similarly here you see this fibrovascular PED can also be associated with CNVM so you can see this fluid here okay in the subretinal space and this is heterogeneous uh, accumulation or heterogeneous density in the sub RPE zone so this is fibrovascular PED so you just have a look at this this is not regular and you have this heterogeneous material again this is not regular you have this heterogeneous this is hyper reflected in between there is some areas of bleed also so those might be the vascular areas so this is how your vascular PED is going to look like on OCT. Coming to how about the hemorrhagic PD? Hemorrhagic PD also will look very similar. There will be regular zone, there will be hyper and hyper reflected areas. What is more important is that this blood will not allow the light through light to pass through it. So you will see the shadowing effect because of that blood. So you can see the shadow coming up. So that is because of the blood which is present in hemorrhagic PET. So you have this back shadowing. Now coming to the end stage of the dry ARMD and that is called the geographical atrophy. So have a look at this fundus picture. You can see a lot of drusens here and there and you can see this area of hypopigmentation because here we have the atrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium and the outer layers of the retina. Now because there is hypo, uh, there is atrophy, what is happening here? Because of the atrophy, you can see this part of the retina looks thinned out and the foveal counter is also not normal. You can see the outer nuclear layers are totally disrupted. You do not see that layering, the proper layering of hyper and hyper reflected zone in the uh, retina. And you can see here that actually because there is atrophy, more amount of light can now pass through this area and you can see excessive light passage through the choroid and this is called hypertransmission defect which is occurring because of the geographical atrophy.
Similarly, in this picture, you see the zone of uh, geographical atrophy and what is happening here again, the outer retinal layers are atrophied, the outer nuclear layer is atrophied, RP is atrophied. So you can see this excessive light which is passing through it and you are seeing a thinner areas. So this is the geographical atrophy. Coming to the CNVM, choroidal neovascular membrane, a very important feature of the wet ARMD. So it can be type 1, type 2, type 3. So let's discuss one by one what is meant by a type 1 CNVM. Uh, type 1 CNVM is CNVM which occurs from the choroid and li gets limited basically below the RPE. So this is your RPE and you can see this heterogeneous areas below it. Okay, so this, uh, this is nothing but your CNVM. So at first look, it looks like a fibrovascular PD. Yes, it is a fibrovascular PD, but along with that, you can see that there's a lot of subretinal fluid here. So, this is subretinal fluid okay in this area so where is that subretinal fluid coming from it's coming from this choroidal neovascular membrane or the fibrovascular pd which harbors the cnvm so it appears so you can actually think it as a fibrovascular pd with fluid is mostly a cnvm now in this area actually you see a hyperreflected area here so it's nothing but a part of this choroidal vascular membrane has broken down from the rp and gone into this uh, uh, above the rpe layer so this is a part of a type 2 cnvm also so in this picture you have type 1 and type 2 as well and of course here also you can see some part of cnvm broken and travel to the intraretinal area as well now in this picture you can see this irregular pigment epithelial detachment and you can see this black space here this is the subretinal fluid so this is also your type 1 cnvm similarly here you see a pigment epithelial detachment but you see this heterogeneous areas in between this pigment epithelial detachment and here is the subretinal fluid that means this is a choroidal neovascular membrane Coming to CNVM type 2, how do you, uh, the type 2 CNVM is basically is a CNVM which occurs above the level of the RPE. So in this picture also you can see that uh, we have the RPE, okay, so this RPE is actually elevated and what you see is that you, uh, this this is actually showing that here we have this intraretinal fluid which is occurring in the form of cyst represented by this arrow okay and then we have this hyper reflected material here so the rpe is down and you have this hyper reflected material and this is also rpe because the brux membrane is not that hyper reflected so that hyper reflected area is the rpe and you have this hyper reflected material and this is called the cnvm and this cnvm is actually secreting all that uh, fluid and so you have the subretinal fluid here and intraretinal fluid here so this is a type 2 cnvm which is occurring basically above the level of rpe and not below the rpe now type 3 cnvm is a retinal angiomatosis proliferance in which the hyper reflected material will be starting from the retina itself so rap lesion is starting here and from here then it progresses and goes towards the sub RP zone and towards the choroid. Then the anastomosis will develop. So you can see this lesion here and you can see the subretinal fluid. This is the RAP lesion and uh, addition to that we have very flat pigment epithelial detachments. So sometimes you can even see a blood vessel. So blood vessel will look like this. So it will be hyper reflected in the surrounding area but it will cause the, black, uh, the back shadowing because it will not allow the light rays to pass through it. So you can see here this is the subretinal fluid. This is the intraretinal fluid and you can see some of the hyper reflected material here and that is nothing but your RAP lesions. Now what if the CNVM how do you see the response to treatment or the CNVM which has scarred out with treatment or just like that on OCT. So basically there are three things that you see in a scarred out CNVM. Those three structures are number one you will see big cystic spaces which shows that the CNVM is old. Second, you'll see the hyperreflectivity, which is quite more hyperreflected compared to the reflectivity that you see in a normal CNVM. And then you'll see this photoreceptors getting degenerated and forming a taking a tubular configuration that is called ORT or outer retinal tubulation. So this is how you recognize a scarred out CNVM on OCT. Now, another variant of wet ARMD is the IPCV or idiopathic polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy in which you have the sub uh, RPE aneurysmal polyps and you also have this branching vascular networks which are present below the RPE. So usually you are going to see very large kind of uh, PDs and these tall, sometimes you will see a very tall PD as well. 
and adjacent to the tall PD you will see a very shallow PD and this shallow PD usually harbors a network of branching uh, uh, vascular network which is difficult in the idiopathic polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy so you see this polyps basically below the level of RPE now there are a lot of other signs also on OCT in IPCB which will be a topic for another discussion now finally the end point of wet ARMD is basically the disiform scarring so this is how a disiform scar is going to look like with a lot of pigmentation and fibrosis and this fibrosis will be represented on OCT in the form of this hyper reflected organized scar formation and you know scar will also transfer a more amount of light so you can see so much amount of hyper reflectivity here and this is nothing but it is a disiform scar and sometimes you will have intraretinal also but the scars will basically show this window defect and because of that there will be hyper transmission so that's all for today thank you and have a nice